Today's Namaste Yoga is all about the yoga strap and making a connection. Hello and welcome to episode 223 of Namaste Yoga. Today we are going to be doing a whole class on the yoga strap. Who's excited? This class is all about me. <laughs> I am because I'm crazy and kooky. You know how many people tell me I'm kooky? <laughs> yes, I'm starting to believe them. <laughs> Not kooky. <laughs> kooky in a good way. <laughs> Um, well, you're going to need your yoga strap for today's class. <laughs> we are going to have fun with this prop today. It is amazing what you can do with this. I really got my creative Shakti going for today's class, and I am so excited to share it with you today. So thank you to Dusky Lee for this awesome yoga strap. I just want to say we filmed a little commercial for them before today's class, and there are some great features in this, this strap. It's all made of natural cotton fibers. It's a super strong strap. And one of the other great features of the strap is that it has metal rings with the D-clips. And it makes it a lot stronger than the, um, these D-clips make it a lot stronger than uh, the plastic buckles that you see on a lot of straps too. It's a nice long strap too. So that's the strap that I'm going to be using today along with my Dusky Leap Yoga mat. And that's all you're going to need today because we're just going to strap it out with the whole class. And thanks to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes, I'm wearing a long sleeve bamboo black top today with my moss dusky, uh, my moss squeezed pants uh, that are leggings. And I'm wearing, I'm layering it with my Hanuman um, tank underneath. And we have a really beautiful testimonial for you today that came from Clarion from Tennessee and she left a speak pipe message that had me in tears. It was so sweet. Hi, Tim and Melissa. This is Clarion from Tennessee. I just wanted to thank you both so very much for all that you do. I've been following Namaste Yoga for about three months now. It came into my life at a most perfect time. I was attending yoga classes locally twice a week for almost two years until I started a new job as a caregiver doing 24-hour shifts starting on Sunday at 6 p.m. and not being able to leave until Friday at 6 p.m. So my life was undergoing transformation and thanks to you it was not so hard making the adjustment. My practice has become much more spiritual, and watching the integration of all the branches of yoga come together has been deeply moving and satisfying. I'm happy to be a member on your site. There is so much to enjoy, and I'm just beginning to get started. I also love how you incorporate poems and quotes into the practice. All of the joy and effort that has gone into your work is appreciated. Thank you all very much, and keep laughing. You are a great teacher. Namaste. So thank you so much for your testimonial, Clarion. It was really great to hear from you, and I appreciate you taking the time to leave such a well-organized message, too. It was really beautiful. And you can leave a message for me at melissawest.com. There's a little speak pipe um, app that comes up and says we'd love to hear from you so that would be great to hear from you so let's go ahead and get started actually in my show notes it does say we will be using a wall you might need a blanket and a bolster as well so apparently I'm not just going to use the strap today and you can go ahead and rest back 
to allow yourself to transition and ground before we get going. So, of course, this is Namaste Yoga, so we're not just going to focus on the physical. I'm going to be able to show you how we're going to be able to think about the yoga strap, um, how it relates to our day-to-day -day life and how we will um, make a metaphor of the strap, of course. <laughs> Only I can do that, right? <laughs> so start by taking a deep breath in and let it fall out of your mouth and let this be a transition from your day-to-day -day life and arrive here on your mat to begin to focus on your yoga practice. So yoga props like the yoga strap allow you to receive the benefit of your yoga pose without overextending yourself thus allowing you to experience greater ease and stability and more connection with your breath in a yoga pose. And yet, a lot of times people hold back from using props such as a yoga strap. So perhaps people feel like they are cheating in their yoga practice if they use a prop. And it's important to look at the life connection here if you feel like you're cheating or you feel like you shouldn't use props because it may just be that you are also less likely to receive support in other areas of your life as well if you're not willing to take support on your yoga mat. So just ask yourself that question if that's true off your yoga mat as well. So I have found props like the yoga strap to be another tool to explore creative expression as a yoga teacher and a yoga student. And today we will explore the yoga strap as a tool to soften edges, both on and off our yoga mat. One of the coolest things that the yoga strap can do for you is to extend your limbs and create connections. So reflect on this physically for you in your yoga practice, but also in your day-to-day -day life? Are there things in your life that are out of reach? And if so, how do you bring them within your reach in your life? How do you make connections? So what acts as a yoga strap in your life? What acts as the intermediary or the go-between, that personal connection in your life? Yoga straps help to give you a connection when you can't reach a body part on your own. So what acts as a yoga strap in your life to access connections? How do you access connections in your life? How do you merge and create those relationships, affiliations, and alliances in your own life? Yoga straps are also a great way to create a bind. You can insert your arms or legs in the loop and hold them in a position for support to keep them from slipping. So support from slipping and you can think about how that happens in your life. How do you create that kind of security and stability in your own life? Are there times in your life when you feel like you're slipping and you need support? And how do you receive that support in your life? So ask yourself what purpose the extra support is serving you and let that answer guide the way that you're using it in your practice. So begin to form an intention since you know how we're going to use the strap now for what it is that you're creating in your life around support and connections and, and ask yourself how your yoga practice can best serve you in creating support and connections. And then go ahead and form an intention for what you would like to receive from this practice today. And once you set your intention, 
you can begin to wiggle and stretch out and then um, stay lying on your back. We'll, we will start by using your strap. So I am just going to move these candles off behind me. I don't want my hair to get caught on fire. <laughs> that is just the nastiest smell ever. Plus, I rather will admit that I am attached to my hair. <laughs> I do like my hair. So I'm going to start with a small loop in, in our straps. And this is one that you all know, but I think I'm going to show you something a little different that you can do with it. You're going to hook your strap around your right foot. So I'm going to show you a couple of things, actually. This is something um, that's really important for where you place your strap around your foot. So maybe even, Tim, if you can do a close-up around my a foot here. When you place your strap around your foot, it's important that you place it either on the ball of your foot or the heel of your foot. In this case, I would recommend the ball of your foot. There's, um, it's just not good for your foot to place it in the arch of your foot. It's, you can do damage if you place it there. So try and place it on the ball of your foot is probably the best place for it. So when we lie back here, we're gonna do supta, and that's hand to big toe pose. And so here you can see that the strap creates the connection because um, for most of us, this is just to, you can make the connection, but you couldn't create the full extension in your leg or you couldn't reach. So the strap creates that connection for us. And this is also another thing that I wanted to show you in this pose is that the other thing is that in this pose, I often see the death grip going on here in white knuckles. So in order to get rid of that, you can take the strap and place it around your back. So this is a little, this is worth it to get set up. You almost, you create a pulley system for yourself here. And then your hands are free. And this works really, really well here. And then you can also relax your shoulders a lot more as well. And then you can open your strap out to the side here as well. you can cross it over your body. So the strap around your back works quite well for all of that. And then your hands are free, your shoulders are free and relaxed and heavy on the ground. Okay, so great support there, and also a nice connection. And then you can go ahead and release and check in with what receiving that support and connection has allowed to happen in your body. And go ahead and set that up on the other side. So placing the strap around the ball of your foot rather than the arch of your foot. And then taking 
your strap around your back. And adjusting the pulley so that it's, it's giving you the support that you need. And then you can open the strap out to the side as well. And there's a wall to support me as well. And then draw your leg back to the center and you can cross it over your midline. And then release your leg down. And then another way that the yoga strap can really help you is by keeping your alignment. And so in bridge pose, for example, we often put a block between our knees here so that your knees don't splay out when you come up into bridge pose. But you can also use your yoga strap for this. So you can take your strap and you can open up your loop to about the width of your legs. And don't worry about it too much because you can adjust it once you've got it around your legs. And, and place the strap around your legs with the, the loop in the center so you can adjust it once you get up. And then check that your legs are hip bone width apart. And so you can see that this is going to prevent your knees from splaying out and then press into your feet and lift up into bridge pose. That's a nice alternative to using your block. Okay, another thing in bridge pose that I never do because I can't do <laughs> is eventually you can hold on to your ankles in bridge pose. So, actually I'm closer than I think, but so I can't, but what you can do, this is another example of where you can use your strap to make that connection where the connection might not already be happening for you. So it starts to help you make those connections. So you take your strap, you place it around your feet, you press into your feet, and then you tuck your shoulders underneath you, and you just start to walk your hands down the strap. So if this was a goal for you in your yoga pose to be able to hold on to your ankles here in bridge pose, you could start working with the strap and walk your hands towards your ankles and, and work towards that goal.
And then release your shoulders and slowly lower down. And from here, you'll draw your knees into your chest. And for some people here, this having the strap in knees to chest pose underneath your knees so you, you don't develop any knee issues, drawing in here can even be useful. Okay, so you can release this, and from here, you can rock yourself up to seated or roll to the side. Tuck your chin if you're rocking up. And then you're going to come on over, and we're going to use a, the strap for a bind again. And this is a great bind that is really useful because this bind helps to keep your elbows from splaying out and not necessarily um well i don't necessarily find for me in this one but maybe for you um that my elbows splay out too much in this one but in other uh, yoga poses definitely one we're going to be doing later so this is the tr the tricky thing about working with a strap is you've got this long strap and then what happens is it gets twisted. <laughs> there we go. So it's worth taking the time to make sure it's not twisted because you are going to have it around your body. Okay, so here you want your elbows to be equal to your shoulders, so you create that bind. Yeah. There so that your elbows are in line with your shoulders. Because what happens, especially in like downward facing dog on your forearms, is those elbows splay right out. So we're gonna do it in plank right now. I'm gonna open that up just a little bit because I think my elbows are a little bit in in my shoulders. Um, this may happen in plank as well. So it just gives some stability. So you're gonna come onto your elbows and come into plank pose. So those are in, I can see they're in. So that would be a little bit too much and then that would create a not good alignment. <laughs> they're still, they're still in eh, Tim? Yeah. So in correcting, we don't want to overcorrect. Better? Okay. So that can just help to keep those elbows in place. And then as I mentioned, it's really helpful here for when you come into downward facing dog on your elbows and those elbows just tend to splay right out when you do that. And then in particular in the inversion, which we won't do today, when you take your legs overhead, they just go way out. So it's good when you're doing <laughs> these forearm poses to start to train the elbows to be in line with your wrists. Okay, so there's that one. And then from here, while we've got this loop, you're gonna open it right up. So pretty much, um, depending on the length of your strap, for mine, it's pretty much, I'm gonna take it all the way to the end. You're gonna take this strap around your back, underneath your shoulders. And this is great. So it goes kind of right underneath your armpits here. This is great because it helps to lift your chest. And then you're gonna put your feet in the strap. And 
lengthen. So I need a little bit more length even. And then lengthen out long through your feet and bring your arms up. So boat pose. And normally you would hold on to your feet, so, but my hamstrings aren't flexible enough to do that. Without a lot of warming up. Yeah, real yoga. So this is real yoga for real people. Keeps my chest nice and lifted. It helps with balance. And then you can release that down and you can take the strap and another way you can do this same pose is to take your strap without the loop and put the strap around the balls of your feet again bring your legs up into the square root sign and then lengthen through your legs that way so that you use the strap to reach your feet to make that connection between your feet when your limbs aren't long enough. Okay, great. And go ahead and release this posture from your body. And from here, how about we do a little bit of downward facing dog without the strap. There's some great things you can do with the strap in Adho Mukh Swanasana. If you had a teacher with you, they can use the strap to pull back your pelvis. I love that one. Um, you need two people for that though. And then make your way up to standing. You are going to love what I show you from standing. Make sure you bring your strap with you. Okay, the last one I showed you last week in last week's class too and got everybody excited about the strap class. So this is kind of a repeat, but don't worry, there's lots of new stuff too. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you've been amazed so far. <laughs> Okay, so here you're gonna take your arms in the V shape and you're gonna inhale, take your arms overhead and you take your arms as wide as you need to to be able to take them all the way over and then exhale them back. So it's inhale up and over and exhale them back. And I'm not spending a whole lot of time on any one exercise because I have so much to show you so exciting. <laughs> okay, nice, lubricating the joints and creating lots of space in the joints. And then I'm taking my legs wide. And then what I'm going to do is exhale and I'm gonna do a, a chest opener with the strap and exhale and fold forward with that chest opener. Okay, and then release that down. This one, this next one is amazing. And if you 
work at a desk, which is pretty much everybody, <laughs> this would be a great one to take your strap with you to work if you have an office job or maybe even when you're driving. Um, you could even use it in your standing posture sometimes. So what you're going to do is start with your strap around your back, just below your shoulder blades. And then you're going to bring it around the front and just check and make sure your straps are about equal distance. They're even here. And then you're gonna put your straps over your shoulders. And once you've done that, you're going to give them a little tug here to pull your shoulders back. And that's not all. <laughs> then what you're gonna do is cross them so you've got an X on your back. That's going to pull your shoulders back even more. And, and just make a little adjustments as you go so it feels even better. And then you'll take your strap here and you can use your buckle. And buckle yourself in. And then you can leave it on. And you could practice, so you could practice your warrior one here, your warrior two, you could practice your triangle pose, you could do your work at your computer for a while like this. But uh, I remember the first time I did this, um, it was like, wow. Phew, all that weight off my shoulders it really opened things up. And, and this time when I did it, it also showed me how far I've come in opening up my shoulders and dropping them down because it just didn't really seem like such a big deal anymore. So it was a big indicator to me that this, my whole shoulder girdle has dropped a lot since the first time I did it about a decade ago. So it's a pretty cool thing that you can do. And I would highly recommend checking it out, especially if you've got a lot of shoulder te tension. It's a great little trick. I call it the backpack. Because <laughs> it's kind of like putting on a backpack, isn't it? Okay, so that was the backpack. And then this is a cool one for Trikonasana. So what you're gonna do for this one is create a big loop. And you're going to put the loop around your left foot. And then you're going to step your right leg through the loop. And you want your strap. Actually, so I'm going to do that the opposite way because right now my strap is facing the wrong way for this. So I'm going to step on my right foot and step, step on, the strap is gonna be on my right foot. I'm gonna step my left foot through because my, I want my strap to be pulling back on my left leg, okay? So you want the leg that it's on, the strap to be pulling back, okay? And then what you're gonna do is pull that strap back and you have to tighten it up as much as you need to. So it's actually surprising how much you need to tighten it to help roll your, that pelvis open. So I think depending on how much rotation you have going on in your hips already is how much this, this exercise help, will help you, how much you'll find this exercise will help you. And then you can come into Trikonasana. And then we'll try that the other way. So, 
step through on the left, on the right foot, step the strap into your left foot. The strap should be rolling out on your left leg. And then you're gonna reach up and you just pull, roll that thigh bone out. Okay, and then you can release that. So that's kind of a neat way to use your strap for triangle pose. And then the next one is dancer pose. And for this one, you can shorten up your loop and you can shorten it up a bit. You don't need to make a really small loop for this one. And you might want to hold on to a wall for some extra balance here but you're gonna stick your foot in the loop behind you. And so ultimately for dancer pose, eventually this is about creating connection in your posture, but eventually in this pose, your foot would be on your head and your hands would be holding onto your foot and your head. And so the strap is so great in this pose because you can start to make that connection through your strap by walking your hands down the strap here and then you get to have both your hands involved and so this is a great one when your limbs can't meet to get more of a sense of this pose And then you can release that and try it on your other leg as well. So you just stick your foot in your strap, bring it around behind you, and start to walk your hands down your strap. And bring your limbs closer together. Great. And with that one, that's really cool too, because then, you know, normally when we do this pose, you might do this, but when you use the strap, then you get more of the tricep. So it allows you to f experience the uh, more of the posture too when you, when you use the props. Um, okay. The other one that I wanted to do with you is um, you can do... When you stand, you can do this version of, you can do hasta padasan. So of course, reaching your hand to your foot, unless you have super flexible hamstrings, might not be possible. So you can do it again with your strap. So we did this lying down too. So I just, I'll, I'll maybe just show you briefly because <laughs> This class will get really long <laughs> otherwise. So you can do that with your strap. Nice use of the strap, nice balancing posture, standing. I, I really prefer this pose lying down because then so much more of your 
body gets to release into gravity. Okay, and then you can do this um, tree pose. You can do tree pose and half lotus. Now, the issue with this pose can be um, that for some people, there can be a slipping in this pose. So you can take your strap, put it around your foot, and take it around your back, okay? And then you've got extra support here for tree pose to hold your foot up. And sometimes one side will <laughs> slip and the other side won't. <laughs> so it's like, oh, that's going to be okay, but maybe the other side isn't. And so, or one side has nice lift and the other side doesn't. So the strap can really help there. Now I'm going to show you side angle pose and I'm going to put my back to you because in side angle pose there's an option to do a bind. And so binding when your arms can't reach, you can always use your strap. So I think I'll just put my strap and maybe get you guys to put your straps around your neck like a little scarf for now. And stand at the front of your mat and take a step back with your left foot and then sink down with your right sit bone. Bring your arms up into warrior two, and then bring your right arm down to your right thigh. Sweep your left arm all the way around for side angle. Okay, you're going to bring your right hand to the outside of your right leg, and So for this bind, you, you take sorry, you take your right hand to the inside of your right leg, and then you reach your left hand to the outside of your body and reach. But if you can't reach for this, <laughs> you could always use your strap to create the bind so that you're holding on like that. Okay, so I can show you that on the other side as well. So take your left leg to the, we'll turn both feet front, turn your left toes in, your right toes out. Sink down to your left sit bone. Bend your left elbow to the top of your left thigh, circle your right arm around. Okay, from here, take your left hand to the inside of your left leg. Bring your right arm around. Your hands may reach. If not, you can pick up your strap and hold on like that. And then you can go ahead and release this posture from your body. All right. From here, we're going to come down and I'm going to show you, this is where I was gonna use the, the blanket, but mine's all folded up in a chest underneath stack tables and boxes <laughs> right now, so if you have a blanket, just put your blanket down here for extra padding underneath your head. I'm gonna do rabbit pose. I actually showed this last week in Namaste Yoga as well. And this just gives you the flexibility to go probably further with your shoulder joints. 
Um, if you have any neck injuries, you might want to be careful about placing that weight on the top of your, through your cervical spine. But if you have, if you don't, if you don't know of any reason why you can't put weight through your cervical spine, this should be fine for you. So what you're going to do is come on to all fours and place your crown of your head on the top of the ground. And then you can interlace your fingers and open up through your shoulders. So you might have good range of motion here, but you might find that if you pick up the strap, that you're able to get even more range of motion through your shoulder girdle here. And then slowly lower down and come on back up. Um, from here, we're going to come into Pigeon. And I'm going to show you how we can work with King Pigeon Pose with the strap. So come on to all fours and slide your right knee forward to your right wrist. Reach your left leg back and long. And then we'll actually just stay like that. Pick up your strap. And you'll put your strap around your left foot. And then this is similar to dancer's pose, where eventually your foot would be on your head and your hands would hold on to your foot on your head. And so you can use your strap to start to bring, connect that distance. And then you can release that down. And we can go ahead and do that pose on the other side as well. So come back onto all fours and slide your left knee forward to your left wrist, taking your left heel over to your right hip bone, reach your right leg back and long. And then you'll bend your right Heel up, and you can lean over to your left butt cheek when you do this, and then just come back over to a more level pelvis once you get into the pose. And then start to walk your hands down the strap so that your hands and feet come closer to each other. this posture from your body and we're going to do some seated postures now the the strap is great for seated forward folds again to connect your limbs when they don't quite reach so sit towards the back of your mat and then Extend your right leg out long. And here, if you've got a folded blanket, you can sit up on your blanket so that you can roll your pelvis forward. And you can use your strap, again, around the balls of your feet 
to create that connection there, to help assist you with your forward fold, to support you, and to create that connection here. And to help create a lift in your chest too. And then slowly roll your pelvis back up over your leg bones and switch your legs so your left leg is long, your right leg is bent. And then inhale, lift up nice and tall. Exhale, roll your pelvis over your leg bones. And again, use your strap to make that connection. And then you can start to walk your strap down towards your feet. And slowly back up. And another one is Paschimottanasana. This one can be a tricky one to reach your feet. So roll your pelvis over your leg bones. Place your strap around your feet, at the balls of your feet, and use your strap to make that connection, connect your limbs. Okay, and then go ahead and release this posture from your body. For the final pose of the class today, we're going to do recline badha kanasana. And for this, you're going to need your strap, and you could use a bolster too. I don't know about throwing that. Okay, thanks. Um, if you don't have a bolster, you can use a, a rolled up blanket under your chest. For this one, we often use blocks around for underneath our our legs but you can create a loop here you can bind your legs as well so you create a loop around your legs and then you use your strap to tighten that or loosen it as much as you need to <laughs> Once those clips get tight, they hold on really strong, which is great. You want that when you're in your inversions and stuff. So that's that. You've got that holding. And that's really great and important for your... So you've got that support for your SI joints, so you're not hanging on those joints. And then you can rest back like this for Shavasana today. And as you rest back, I have a quote for you that pulls this whole class together just beautifully. I can hardly stand it. So this is a quote by Jin Ga Fairbairn. And the quote goes like this. When we remember we all share the same breath. We come to understand the connection binding us together. We are kin. We are walking each other home by helping and supporting one another. 
can you believe that had all my keywords in it? It had connection, it had binding, and it had supporting in it. I just loved it. So I'm going to repeat that again. When we remember, we all share the same breath. We come to understand the connection binding us together. We are kin. We are walking each other home by helping and supporting one another. And gradually allow your breath to deepen, draw up to your pelvic floor, draw your navel back to your spine to support drawing your legs back to your midline. And tuck your chin, roll to your right side. And slowly make your way up to seated. So thank you for joining me for this class on the yoga strap and exploring our connections and support using this really fantastic prop. I'd love to hear your comments about it. So leave them on the membership site or you can leave them on my website at melissawest.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.